Welcome to this tutorial on setting up and using JupyterHub, specifically the littlest JupyterHub on AWS. JupyterHub comes in two distributions. There's Zero to JupyterHub, abbreviated ZTJH, which is a multi-node version of JupyterHub based on Kubernetes. There's also a single node version of JupyterHub called the littlest JupyterHub, abbreviated TLJH. This YouTube video goes a little beyond the great official JupyterHub tutorial on how to set up the littlest JupyterHub on AWS. The hope is that this video and corresponding blog post, which you can find linked below, will make you less likely to run into issues in this 15 plus step process. With that, let's get started. The first step is to go to the AWS website, click on sign in. On the sign in page, choose either root user or IAM user, enter in your email and password. If you're an IAM user, make sure you have the appropriate permissions so you can at least create an AWS EC2 instance. For step two, click on EC2. If you don't see it, use the search bar at the top of the screen and type in EC2. For step three, on the EC2 management console, click on instances. If the screen looks a little different, note that I've toggled on new EC2 experience. For step four, all you have to do is click on launch instance. For step five, you'll need to name and optionally add tags to your instance. I recommend you give your instance a name and tags identify what the resource will be used for. In my case, I'm calling mine my JupyterHub tutorial because I'm making a tutorial, which I'm now sharing with you. For step six, scroll down to application and OS images and choose an Ubuntu version. I recommend using Ubuntu 20.04 as of the recording date of this video because when I tried using Ubuntu 22.04, I ran into an error, which you can check out in a blog post below. In step seven, you'll go down to instance type. Before choosing an instance, I highly, highly recommend you check out how much each instance costs, plus JupyterHub's guide on estimating how much memory, GPU, disk space you'll need based on the number of concurrent users. Basically, at a minimum, you need to use a server with one gigabyte plus of RAM but I found at least eight gigabytes of RAM better suits my needs. And that is to teach and practice data science. If I know that I'll be using JupyterHub to do tasks in multiple cores, especially with Ray, Dask, or Spark, I tend to pick something with more virtual CPUs. For example, T2 Micro has one, T2 Large has two, and T2X Large has eight. It's important to remember that any instance you choose will end up costing you money, unless you have a lot of free credits. For step eight, you'll need to go to key pair login. You'll either select an existing key pair or create a new key pair. If you create a new key pair, make sure to download and keep it somewhere safe. You won't be able to replace it. Selecting a key pair is a really important step as you'll need a key to be able to SSH to your instance or easily download files. In my case, I've already created my key pair, so I'm gonna select it. Step nine is about configuring your network settings. This is the part of the tutorial where you can either create security groups or select an existing security group. This will definitely impact how your instance can be accessed. In this tutorial, you'll probably want to check the following. Allow SSH traffic from, allow HTTPS traffic from the internet, as well as allow HTTP traffic from the internet. Clicking on these three options will create three security rules. For step 10, you'll be configuring your storage. This allows you to choose how much storage you want, as well as the volume type. In other words, GP2, GP3, IO1, etc. For this tutorial, I'm going to go with the default storage, which happens to be GP2. For step 11, go to advanced details and scroll down to user data. This step is about providing a command script that runs when you launch your instance. The installer script in the blog post will install JupyterHub. Before proceeding to paste the text into user data, at a minimum, you'll need to replace admin username with the admin user. One thing to note with this script is that show progress page will create a temporary TLJH is building progress page shortly after the instance is launched. 
This will allow you to see pretty quickly whether or not the installation is going well. Additionally, if you want to make changes after launching JupyterHub, I should note that you can always install additional Conda, PIP, or APT packages, as well as add or remove admin users. Also, there is no password set in this script, as this will be something set up later in the tutorial. For step 12, go to Summary and click on Launch Instance. Step 14 is all about patience, as you'll need to wait for the JupyterHub installation to complete. The official documentation said that it takes about 10 minutes for this process to complete. However, it's typically much quicker for me. Inside the EC2 management console, check in your instance. You'll see a public address. I recommend you copy this and paste it into another tab in your browser. If you suddenly get a 404 error, don't worry, it's not necessarily the end of the world. What I recommend that you do is you copy your IP address and paste it into another tab. You should now see the sign-in screen. For step 15, you need to enter in your admin username you specified in step 11. In my case, it's mgalarnik. Also, enter in a password which can be seven characters or longer. Click on Sign In and Welcome to JupyterHub. From here, you can launch a new notebook. Of course, you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can also go to the Control Panel. You can also add extra admins and do so much more. And that's it. This tutorial went over how to set the little stripper hub on AWS. Installations can take significant time to set up and even more time to manage. If you prefer not to deal with installing and maintaining a server, you can always use a product like Saturn Cloud. Regardless, if you have any questions or thoughts on the tutorial, please feel free to reach out in the comments below or through the blog post or even Twitter. Thanks everyone.